drive before we open the meeting, I'll uh, ask uh, Eddie Fields of Craig Boris and a young man with a uh, ROTC at St. Joe High I'll lead us in pledge. Eddie? Lord, we just want to thank you for this beautiful day. And Lord, we want to thank you for our mayor, the commissioners, and the staff to help make this city grow and make it be better. Lord, we just thank you for what's going to be said today. We thank you for wise decisions today. Lord, we know that we need you in everything that we do. And we want to thank you right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 I pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, we'll call the August 16th meeting of the city to order. Thank you all for coming and having an interest in our city. We are uh, going to jump ahead and uh, let this young group from uh, Fort St. Joe High School uh, come forward, whoever the spokesman is going to be. Uh, please come forward. They have a uh, request they'd like to make of us. So, young man, come up. Uh, state your name and print your name, please, on the sign-in sheet. And the floor is all yours. Good afternoon, members of the council. My name is Aiden Sapp. I'm 17 years old, and I'm a junior at Fort St. Joe High School. Today, I would like to present for this community would benefit from a skate park. I'm speaking for the youth of the community, as well as over 500 locals who signed this petition. There are many benefits to build a local skate park in our community, such as giving individuals who have the common interest of skateboarding, scootering, roller skating, and BMX, and giving them a safe place to practice their skills. Also, it will, provide a, it will provide physical and health benefits for the youth instead of increasing cell phone and other device usage. A skate park gives the kids the advantage to go outside and try something new. A local skate park will also attract tourists from all across the United States to try our park, increase local business sales like restaurants, hotels, and entertainment. I would now like to go over the medical and funding as well as the location for the park. Do not worry about the waivers or insurance for the skate park. The health liability for the skate park falls under the same liability as our city parks, tennis courts, and other recreational areas. As of funding, we are currently reaching out to make contact with Vans, the skate park project, as well as the Tony Hawk Foundation and change.org. And we also are getting some local donations. The cost of the skate park would be around $30 to $40 per square foot. For locations, I've been talking to local city workers as well as law enforcement for places that would be perfect, such as the open area next to the stack house, as well as the open field across from 16th Street Park. And the behind Goodwill on, I forgot the address, I'm sorry. Box Hill Avenue, yes, thank you. Thank you for your time, and before I close the discussion, I would like to say a quote from the most renowned skateboarder, Tony Hawk. These parks are testaments to a community's commitment to the health and well-being of its citizens. It's up to cities and skaters to work together to ensure that everyone is a safe and functional place to ride. At this time, I would enjoy taking any questions. Very nice. Thank you. Uh, I got a comments. question. Go ahead. Would you be opposed to a skate park? being part of a sports complex at the Field of Dreams location. If you're not sure where that is, it's, you know where the hospital is? It's kind of it's behind a, the hospital uh, and that behind that new Goodwill. Uh, First Baptist Church is building a church there at the end of that road. Yes, and we're actually, uh, we have acreage there. We're trying to reach an agreement with the county to fund an entire new sports <laughs> complex. And I think uh, in my mind, I'm thinking, well, why couldn't it be part of, of that, where tennis and, and pickleball and, and maybe even a pool and all that? Would you be opposed to that location? No, I would not. That sounds awesome. Thank you. Yes, sir. 
in mind? What is the average size of a skate park? You talked about the cost per square foot. How big of a skate park do you think the community could handle? So the skate park in Panama City is roughly around 20 feet, maybe, 20 to 30 feet long. It's not wide, it's just long. Um, it's probably about 20 feet wide and 40 foot long. All right. Yes, sir. Construction. Well, I have one more. One more. Construction wise, are these typically made out of concrete, or are you talking like half pipes made out of wood, or what? Do, what do you Con mean? Concrete would be the most best option, especially for Florida. We get a lot of rain. We get a lot of hurricanes. Concrete, it's sustainable. It doesn't get rotted. It doesn't wear down. It stays the same over time. Good point. Very good. We have a uh, workshop scheduled with the county here. Uh, August 25th at 5 o'clock in the afternoon and it would be wonderful if you could get a group to come to that because this is a part of our master plan at the Field of Dreams with softball, baseball, uh, a, uh, an indoor uh, building where you could do gymnastics or uh, those type things. So. So master plan, it's far down the road a little bit, but but if we don't get started, it'll never happen. So uh, yes, it would be great if you talk to your friends, your parents, any anybody that you know, come to that meeting and voice your, uh, uh, not concerns, but voice your uh, ideas uh, to the group. And uh, I think that would help us. Yes, sir. One other thing I'll add too, if you have any ideas of what, there's a ton of things that go into skate parks, you know, pipes and all. Uh, if you could come up with some ideas of what you might want it to look like, just sketch it out on a piece of paper and show us what you're looking for, yes, sir. And what type of things we need to build it in. Or you may be able to get, uh, uh, a matter of public record, you may be able to get uh, the blueprint from Panama City, Bay County, uh, whoever put that in Panama Beach, I don't know, but you might get a complete set of blueprints from from their uh, department. Yes, sir. So uh, that would be a good start also. All right. Can I, 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 can I ask you something? Um, just a time frame in your mind. <clears throat> excuse me. What's the time frame that you think that you would like to see this done? I mean, how long? You know, within a year or two. Okay. I want to see it before I go to the Navy. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, excuse me, Councilman. I'm a transplant here at Port St. John from Fairhope, Alabama, originally, but I've uh, thus far made Port St. John my home. Uh, as I've been around here, there's nothing for these kids to do. Like, they, they, we have some places over in, uh, like, from Washington High School, they can play basketball and things of that nature. I see them around town. They, they try to skate on the sidewalk. So the faster you get it done, I think the faster you'll see that these kids will start coming outside and actually socializing rather than staying at home and coming up with mischievous things to do. Chief, state your name, please, for the record. So My name is uh, James Watkins. I'm the uh, ROTC instructor at Fort St. Joe High School. See, that's perfect. Thank that's, you. That's why I asked the question because we're talking, we're talking about field of dreams. That's five, six, seven years, maybe longer. Um, out the way. So I think that I appreciate you coming. So we need to put our minds together and figure out um, what we can do to support um, the youth because he's right. I mean, my daughter, you know, she graduated three years ago and she laid in that dog on the room with that cell phone and that um, laptop all day long. So we need something for these kids to go out aside and enjoy themselves, communicate with each other talk to each other, not text. And so I think it's important for us to go ahead and try to move forward with this as soon as possible. Um, he had some good areas also that we might be putting. Did you have a question? Come yeah, on. I did. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, my name is Tyler Matney, and for the record, I just wanted to add to that that I, uh, sense of urgency. Uh, just a second, Tyler. Tyler Matney, M-A-T-N-E-Y. Is that all you need to show? Them? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, thank you. I'm sorry. Uh, in the sense of urgency, it seems like 
those areas that they listed off, Stackhouse, 60th Street Park, you're right. Urgency, I think, is five years is a long time to wait for a skate park. So I think if those areas could be investigated a little bit, that seems like it's more centrally located. It's adjacent to the walking trail, it's adjacent to the baseball fields, all of the playgrounds, the new disc golf courses, the new workout center, all of that runs in a straight row right through the middle of town. That seems like a spot that ought to be investigated a little bit more, and it would obviously not be held up by a five-year plan for the, the Field of Dreams. I just want to add that, that the, guy, the spot that kids are looking at are those areas he listed more so. So if that's something that could be investigated and maybe done sooner, I agree. It would be done sooner. It would be great. So, All right. Thank, thank you. Sure. Thank you, Tom. <clears throat> All right. Any other questions? Thank you, young man, and all, all your friends that came and uh, support you and uh, Miss Sissy. Thank you for bringing them. And uh, if there's no more questions, uh, we'll move on in the agenda. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah. Yeah, I, didn't, I didn't really bring them. They came. I came along um, just to speak as well because I think our community is great in supporting traditional sports. Um, but I have a son who's in the Air Force now who was not that traditional athlete. Um, I have one who was. Um, and, and for these kids, you know, they, I know a lot of times there's a little bit of an image or persona that people have in terms of the type of kid that they are and, and that environment and atmosphere that it might create. But, you know, these kids are good kids. They all need an opportunity. And unfortunately, they're the ones that, especially boys that are bored, uh, fall into that category when they can't find those places. You know, you have the sidewalk restrictions. So, well, they can't ride on the sidewalk with the skateboard, and they can't get in the road with the skateboard, and they can't. All these limitations prevent them from being able to do anything legally, and then that's what leads to some of the mischief that comes about because of that. So it's important for them to have those locations where they can exercise their talents. And these are truly talents. If you've ever watched any Tony Hawk stuff, if you've ever watched BMX Viking, if you've ever watched Travis Pastrana and those kind of folks, I mean, that talent is, and the risk take, the, the um, energy and the um, courage that they have to have to get out and do that, it kind of puts football kind of to shine, quite frankly. But anyway, um, I also have letters here from um, Officer Jerome Williams and um, Andrew White from the Sheriff's Department just saying that they support that as well and they believe that it's important for these youth to have a place to go. So, again, Could you turn those in to Ms. Charlotte, please, sis, and we'll, we'll put them up in the minutes. But I'm here as, a, as to support my students, but as a parent, too. Okay, okay? thank you so much. Anybody else? Oh, that's a great idea. I was one of those kids who cut grass for two months to buy the first Cody skateboard to skate behind old uh, Sears and Roebuck buildings downtown. Oh, I know you're Got run off a lot. <laughs> come, come forward, please, and sign in and state your name. Cleveland Acre. I missed the first time. I did apologize, but. I just want to kind of add on that, you know, with the skating, surfing, the persona, <clears throat> the persona that it puts out, there is an end game with it. With myself, I surfed and skated my entire life here in St. Joe. Ended up getting a full ride scholarship in college for surfing. So it's not just a pastime for something to do, it's actually a future for me. There's something, <clears throat> me. There's something that comes bigger than just having fun, staying out of trouble, whatever. It's, it's an opportunity for somebody who's who's not like a team sport type person to have a future and somewhere to go. And, but with that, someone doing completely separate of this, trying to put together a skate team and say, uh, golly, a skate team and surf team so that they'll be able to travel and experience, hey, Bree, sorry, uh, to be able to experience kind of the bigger picture. Cause like growing up on the weekends, I wouldn't necessarily stay in St. Joe, <clears throat> stay in St. Joe. We go to say the East coast, up and down the East coast, your tournaments, this and that, I mean, experience, you experience a ton of things just through certain, you know, and or skating, but that's kind of hand in hand. So I just, I just want to remember that it is a, it's not just a pastime, it is a potential future. You know, so, Very good. Thank but you, and with the uh, blueprints, design, uh, construction, all that, I've got a lot of resources that I put into it as well. 
So I'm gonna talk to a couple of guys that are kind of getting go, getting it together. But uh, I, know, I got a few ideas myself, but I will see where they're on. Good, and with them. I'll help you with that kind of too. So. Okay, thank you very much. Appreciate it. We appreciate you coming. All righty. Thanks, everybody. And uh, we'll move on to the first item on the agenda is the consent agenda, regular minutes of uh, August 2nd and the workshop of August 2nd. Uh, entertain a motion to approve if there's no corrections or additions. A motion by Commissioner Ashbrook, second by Commissioner Langston. Any further discussion? All in favor, aye. Opposed, same sign, motion passed 5 and up. Okie doke. We got next uh, page nine is the uh, final flight approval of the Cove at Plant, uh, Palmetto Bluff. Uh, Mr. Jim, you got some uh, info on that? Yes, sir. At our last planning board meeting, uh, we did get a favorable recommendation from the planning board to approve the, the final flight for the Cove at Palmetto Bluff uh, with the uh, items listed on page nine. Yep. <clears throat> okay. Uh, I see uh, Mr. Ralph Rich back there in the back who's involved in Palmetto Bluff. Ralph, you mind coming forward and, and just telling uh, actually the community uh, a little bit about your plans, uh, what things are going to look like, uh, what you're doing. We appreciate it. So Palmetto Bluff is a 109 unit uh, development, uh, doing it in uh, four or five phases. Uh, phase one is completed and all the houses are built and it's all, um, all of them have been sold. Uh, phase two is all the houses are under construction and they're, I think two or three sold and the rest of them maybe are reserved. And then this is phase three, uh, which is called the Cove and that's when you leave Long Avenue and you go about 700 feet down and then there's a road that meanders like 2,000 feet and it only has 27 lots on it. Um, the water and sewer is 100% installed. Uh, most of the drainage is installed. All the lakes um, for drainage are installed. Um, we still have to pave it um, and put some sod down and a little bit more underground drainage and then we'll be complete. And I think what... Uh, the administrator is asking is to approve it, if you ask them to approve it, um, with some contingencies of things that we have not completed. And so we have the plat ready, we'll go get everybody to sign it. And it's my understanding that when uh, John goes out and approves the final construction, uh, then they'll ask the mayor to sign it. That's great. Good plan. We're excited about growth for sure. Any questions for Ralph? If not, I'll entertain a motion for a final flat, flat approval with the contingency listed. So moved. Okay. Okay. Motion by Mr. Hoffman, second by Commissioner Ashbrook. Any further discussion, questions? I need to abstain. Okay. Due to a business relationship. Okay. There'll be uh, one abstention. So, any questions? All in favor, aye. aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion passed 4 and 0 and 1 abstention. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, so next item is a uh, workforce housing project update. Uh, Jim? Yes, sir, Mayor. Today, we're happy to have uh, the folks from OKS development here today. We had a meeting last week. They've been working diligently uh, to move forward on the workforce housing development that we've entered into an agreement with. Uh, we have Dr. Sharpie here today. We got uh, Mr. Randy Butler and Mr. Michael Snodgrass here today to give us an update and see what we're going to do. Okay, who I would like to be the spokesman for your group, Michael, or come on up. And, uh, exciting time, it sounds like. Michael Snodgrass with Boy Coast Development Corporation, Dr. Sharkey, and Randy O'Brien speak as well. Yeah, we've been doing a lot of the due diligence that's required uh, have performed the phase one, phase two ASAs, have done the wetland delineation, have worked on the topo and the survey, um, uh, and a lot of the aspects, and now we're at a point where we're kind of stuck until we figure out the road uh, and the road situation. The, the issue is, you know, we had a meet, was it then April? When we had a meet with Duke Energy? And so, we had a meet with Duke Energy to discuss, use our option A is to come along 
uh, public works uh, is about 60 foot right away, 50 to 60 foot right away into the site. That's option A. Option B would then probably go up 10th Street, down the railroad, and kind of back in. And then option C would be through public works. But of course, nobody wants to do option C. So we are diligently working on A and B. So at this time, we're, you know, they were not very willing. Duke Energy was not at the time to uh, discuss an easement. And so we're looking, I think we need a little help from the city to, to move this forward because we can't even lay out the site so we know where we're, where we're going to. And we have funding opportunities coming up in November and December, which seems like a long time away, but it's not. Um, and so we need to figure out how we can move forward uh, and get access into the site. To bring you guys up to date, if, if you haven't already been up to date, it's that, that section right by the Duke Energy substation, we'll call it. And as it turns out from my conversation with Jim, we actually own that road. We actually own that road. They've done a survey. The city owns that road. Y'all correct me if I go too far. So we need to work with Duke and, and try to, you know, convince them that we can do what we want to do, but, you know, we're willing to work with them. So I believe that's that's the perfect spot, or not perfect, but it's at the A spot to get into this development. And it uh, appears these guys are ready to go, and we're, I'm ready for them to go. So uh, uh, on top of that, we'll have to pave uh, 10th Street from uh, Knowles Avenue all the way in. Uh, up to the interest there development, which you guys know how bad that is. Uh, the county has a uh, lay down area and quite a few uh, uh, businesses, or not businesses, but uh, old barn, warehouse, whatever they have there, we might could get them to help us on the pavement a little bit because it helps their access as well. So excuse me, go ahead. No, I, yeah, that's exactly right. So I mean, we're, I guess I'm just here to give the update and see if we can get a little assistance with Duke Energy to, to push this forward. Um, and I'm not sure what the next step is. I think what we need is we need uh, we need the blessing of the board to move forward with discussions with Duke Energy and the railroad itself. Because um, those are the players that, that potentially could have the road leading. Uh, so I think we need to engage city council and city attorney to see if we can move forward and try to move those negotiations to get that ready for point. I, I'm fine. Um, anybody got a problem with that? I have a question. Okay, um, go ahead. You said you had an option A, a B, and a C. Uh, explain option B again. Randy, you, you probably don't understand it. So, it'll be going, you know where they have the gate, you can't see the gate yeah. right now on yeah. Kent Street. So, that's on your lane. Yeah. So we would go up there to the railroad right away, over, and then back down. Pat, once we get past their property, Duke Energy, we come down from there. Mm -hmm. Potentially, some obstacles with that is the power line. Still, we're still going to have to cross the power and go under the power lines. So that's why it's not option A, right? So the um, that's option B. Uh, option A, of course, is still to just go uh, right along the public works building. 60 foot of easement go straight into the site and uh, start building right there. Why is there not an option that I've discussed since day one, and that's follow the railroad tracks all the way to Highway 71? There, there's some. I wonder, what do we call it? There's some challenges with that. Of course, it's I mean, it's, it's a long route. It's not it's not a road per se. Now uh, we it's going to be expensive. Um, and so I'm not sure the funding for that is going to be available when we're wanting to build. I think we can get the, the housing money a lot quicker if we can maybe get that long of an extension uh, built. I'm not saying that maybe that's an option C rather than going to public works. You know, the quickest route would be still that 60 foot long public work, and then the second one would be up and over, but that is, could be, but there are. Randy, do you remember? Yeah, that's a mayor. Uh, yeah, I'm Randy Butler. And to answer your question, Commissioner, it's uh, 
uh, the railroad, I mean, obviously that would be a, an optimal way to go in. I mean, you've got a couple things. You've got you got to get approval through Ginseng Wyoming, which I'm working with them on a project in Panama City right now, which is, they've been very cooperative. They're pretty easy to work with. Uh, but then there's a matter of, you know, paving that much road, and you've got a state road. you got the Florida DOT you got to talk to about, you know, connection permits there. So it's a little more complicated than going, you know, down alongside the public works building be the ideal choice. A lot less paving. A lot less cost. Now, however, Dr. Sharkey says that there is a there's a lot of state money right now for help, helping build infrastructure, especially in hurricane areas. Like Panama City's already exercised that. They, they've got a big spine road for the and some of it. I'll let him speak on that, but I guess that's why it's probably option three with, because of the length of the road to answer your question. The and cost, we, yeah. Cost. And, and, and I'll remind you that we currently have a uh, affordable housing development that, that at one point came to us to develop a secondary uh, phase and we pointed out that we weren't happy with the phase that's currently there and one of the biggest uh, issues that we faced from the people that live in Port St. Joe was while that development serves a, a great need probably now greater than ever, uh, the road in and out of that development is a nightmare. And it has had a substantial negative effect to the people that live there way before the development came. And I will oppose any development if it's going to have a negative impact on the people of Fort St. Joe that are currently living there. There's a brand new house being built. Uh, I'm not sure if they've moved in or not at 71 and, and Knowles. Uh, so there's going to be more houses built that have no idea of what we're discussing today. And I'm going to be steadfast in looking out for those neighborhoods and those people that live in homes that would not have built there if they knew the amount of traffic was going to be coming from and going to the development we're discussing. That's why I'm going to redirect you to really start thinking about cost is going to be greater. I get that, but I will oppose it adamantly if it is based just on the cost and then doing it correctly where you don't have that negative impact on the people living here today. Yeah, I understand that. I appreciate it. Um, but there are limited options on, on the way to get out. The only one, really the only one that you will put in where you would have no impacts to anyone will be the one you first mentioned. mentioned. Highway 71. Highway 71. Absolutely. And that may be where, yeah, if you want to kind of elaborate on what the state bonds are there. And that easement, maybe the railroad? The railroad, yeah, it's a 100 foot easement. I think they, looking at my lane line, they, they own. Jensen, Wyoming, they own a much wider swap. It's not just the, the railroad 100 feet. They've got they've got the parcels all on the side of it. Right. It, it actually creates a triangle where the two tracks split, right. not far from there. I leased that property adjacent mm -hmm. to it for years as a as a hunting lease and ride motorcycles and that kind of thing. So I'm real clear on how that property lies. You also have to remember the railroad tracks that are there have trees growing through them currently. Those tracks are not coming back to Port St. Joe unless some major development all of a sudden pops up in Port St. Joe. Those tracks are not going to be used. That's why I'm thinking you, you may want to start entering into dis, uh, discussions about buying that track and that land. Uh, there's a lot of roads in, in Gulf County currently today that initially were railroad tracks. Highway 71, if you do the history of Highway 71, it actually was a railroad track. And that and then they were like, well, hey, why create a new road when we take this railroad track that's not being used and make a road? So that's my thinking is take the railroad track, it's plenty wide enough, and create a road that goes out to Highway 71. So if I can ask a quick question. So Knowles Avenue over to 10th doesn't it, it's not going to a residential now. There's exactly. one new house. Is that what you're talking yes. so <coughs> okay, And those lots are currently uh, 
could be purchased yeah. and, and the fact the one, that one house built, I'm thinking there will probably be more houses yeah. coming. Yeah. And we were going to do a cul-de-sac at, at Tent and Knowles to protect those people coming off garrison to their homes. So <clears throat> everything will be going that way. And we talked about two entrance and exits way back when as ideal if we you know, need to try to make it happen. So anyway, yeah. thank you for the yeah, maybe, update. Maybe, Go maybe, ahead. Yeah, Jeff, Jeff Sherry, just a couple of comments. <clears throat> so, but I think, you know, remember we talked about that. We shared that earlier this morning. So we'll we'll check on that, uh, Jim. Uh, there is a lot of yeah, obviously we're with the legislature and the Department of Transportation. Yeah, there is there is a there's a lot of you know, infrastructure money, road building money, economic development money that you know would potentially be available supporting something like this, but. Uh, and I've had some conversations with Representative Show, uh, who's certainly interested in the project, uh, to see if we could get involved you know, with some of that growth activity potentially. Uh, I want to mention one other thing. <clears throat> um, I've been pretty actively involved in Florida Housing Finance Corporation's new program called Hometown Heroes. You may be familiar with it, you may not be a big part of it. $100 million awarded to the legislature for essential services, personnel, nurses teachers, uh, public safety people. I mean, it's a great program. Uh, and you know, $100 million, of, you know, that's supposed to be spent by next next July, but it would be perfect really for the home ownership program here. It's $45,000 down payment assistance plus low interest mortgages. I think it would really, fo it would really focus on kind of the folks that you were focused on for workforce uh, in the community. So we'll, we'll continue to work on that. So if we could, we could possibly uh, just uh, thinking outside the box, I guess would uh, if we could get Duke to go along with getting us in that way, and and uh, we could have some kind of uh, language and any kind of agreement we have with this group that they would be actively working on the 71 entrance exit. Would everybody be? Yeah, I'm, I'm not, I'm not house, saying we need the house. To be there. We need the house. I agree, yeah. and, and don't get me wrong. If, yeah. if if it sounded like I'm going to oppose it unless I get my way, that's not what I'm saying. That's what that, I'm that's saying that's a teenager, is, that's a teenager. Yes. Yeah. Don't, what I'm saying is is this: Don't come to me with a proposal when you haven't even looked at, exhausted all possibilities of reaching the funding and going in and out at seventy one. Yeah. If it can't be done, it can't be done. It's not a game changer. But I'm not going to listen to moving forward until you've exhausted that idea. It would be, it would be ideal if we had two ways in and out, to be perfectly honest. So, yeah. I, you know, maybe the short term is the improvement along Knowles um, on that road and getting in that easement over so we can get started. Right? Yeah. And the long term is, or the medium term, is trying to do all the Florida Department of Transportation <coughs> working with them on that extension uh, of that road and securing the funding. Um, because, like I said, ideally, I always have two entrances into a, a project. And then you can always, you know, if you need to, we go and shut the curtains. But I think we need people We will work on both of them. Right. And right. don't, don't uh, the, the other option is you can go south on the railroad tracks, which is actually a shorter distance and come out on the road that takes you to the cemetery. Uh, you only have one landowner there to deal with. Yeah, I think the idea right now is to reach out to Tennessee Wyoming and to Duke Energy and see if we can figure out what our options are for anybody to see if we can get something out of the I think DOT is the easiest part of this puzzle, I think. Funding might be the smartest, but the but <coughs> DOT, I think they'll work with us on that idea. I Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I, just, I just want to let them know where I'm at too. I'm echoing just a little bit. My my fear is dumping all that traffic, not necessarily Knowles, but Garrison. 
and, and if I'm wrong, correct me. Is that from 10th Street to Garrison? So you could take Garrison over. No, we were going to go over Nolte. We were going to get to Garrison. We were going to yeah. block it. Yeah. Right there at Nolte's Yeah, I can't get there. That, that, that's why we're that Nolte to 10th. Actually, that that no, we, we, we wouldn't we show, show you now. It, it'll help Garrison. It'll, it'll, it'll slow John still yeah, down a little bit, yeah, yeah. but uh, it'll it'll decrease the traffic on Garrison, I think. City and the county, for that matter. Yeah. I mean, eventually we might want to work on a, a trail down Garrison Road to Milwaukee. Oh, yeah. Because I know there are some amenities. <clears throat> That I think people would like to walk. And there are grants out there for that right now. Matter of fact, we got one of them. Hey, Mary, back in. Um, yeah. You can have a little bit of time. Yeah. 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 It's fortunate right now I'm doing it. I'm doing one in Bay County on 231, where there's two, they're doing two crosses on that short line rail. So they've been, I was, I was, I was really worried about the meeting with the Jacksonville guys. They were probably the easiest one to work with. Uh, so, but they will, it would help us if the city we it's write a letter. More, yeah, absolutely. We write a letter to them. We yeah, write them. Okay, we can do that. Right. Thank that. you, thank you, Mister. Write a letter. Okay, <clears throat> thank you. All righty, now, Mister Baxley, come on up. Tell us the latest. Good afternoon. Um, running through the list off the agenda. Uh, Long Avenue and First Street lift station, still under construction there. Um, have a few final items left in that job. Um, one being just general cleanup that they're working on this week. Um, the other is lateral lining, which they're still waiting on some material. They had some hold bone material there on the lateral lining and then some water main tie-ins as well. So we're getting close to the end here. Just waiting on a few additional items. We'll be communicating with the contract as well as Jim and John on those completion items and kind of keep those guys in line. And you mentioned uh, the video from LMK. We need we need that. Yep. They yeah, they have all the videos. That make we sure need. they these guys get it. So really yep. important. And that's that's we'll obtain that. I'll talk with Jim and John. We're going we requested that from the contractor, so we'll be getting that for you. Um, also along that along Avenue paving, um, the stormwater model will be completed this week. Um, my expectation is to have the advertisement prepared and sent to the city, ready to get that out for bid next week. Sure. I will provide Jim and John a courtesy review of that one more time. Barring that no changes are made in the stormwater design, we'll be ready to advertise. Um, along with that, CD and Avenue C and D and Dr. Joe Park lot. Um, we will have a 90% plan set to review to the city next week. Barring that we don't have any issues for that, we should be able to follow that up pretty quick with advertising as well. Um, First Street, Jim, I think we're just waiting on yes, we have CI done. selection. We do. We have it on the agenda later on for the CI selection. Once we select that, uh, we have a contract with the contractor, so we are getting prepared to move forward with CI and set up a pre construction unit. Yeah. The contractor did provide the signed agreement, but they have not provided the performance and payment bonds. Um, I would like to review the performance and payment bonds and have a pre construction meeting before we issue the notice to proceed. That's with pocket. Correct. Okay. <clears throat> Um, downtown utility improvements, we're still working through that when we have the plans marked up and we're working on the CAD of those plans. We'll be working on the DOT permit application next to get the cost estimate prepared to send that into SRA. Um, Beacon Hill Sewer, that project is in design. Survey is complete and we're working through design. Um, and then the consumption 
use permit task force? Yes, every five years we do have to renew the permit on the various shop out there for the work plant. So uh, this is for consideration today so we can move forward and get our permit. Okay, we need a motion. Yes, sir. Okay, a, a motion for the uh, consumptive use permit uh, task order for uh, Dewberry in the amount of uh, what, $10,000. So a motion, a motion by Commissioner Lowry, second, second by Commissioner Ashbrook. In discussion, everybody know what we're doing? All Larry, right. I'll redo it by himself. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> All in favor, I oppose same sign motion past five and up. All right, any questions for Josh? Anybody? I, I have a question. I didn't quite understand what he was saying about Avenue C and Avenue D. What is actually going on there? But because that's been a long, long time. That, that those roads will get worse as it rain. It, those where they paved that is just sinking farther and farther. In some areas, when you go across there, you can hear your car bumping the, the right. oil pan, bumping the road, especially on Avenue C, right there in the middle of Avenue C, right where you get design pattern. So, okay. Josh, you want to explain to them where we are on that? The, at the last meeting, we were at sixty. Percent design said we have 30 percent, 60 percent, 90 percent, and 100 percent milestones. So the last meeting we're up to 60 percent. We're now providing a 90 percent plan set, which is essentially a complete design where we review that with the city. If we don't have any major issues right there, no markup, we'll go to 100 percent design and be ready to advertise for construction. Go out to bid. So we're months away. Anybody? Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. Okay, Mr. Clint, it's all yours. Okay, Mayor, a few things on the agenda today. The first thing is the east side uh, sewer purchase agreement update. Uh, where we stand with that was is we had one issue with east side, and it was that they believed that we could operate their east side sewer system without Beacon Hill being online. We told them that we'd send that off to our engineers. We did, we've gotten a response back from our engineers. And just in a nutshell, we need to have Beacon Hill up and running before we can get east side running. Um, if you have any questions about how the engineering works on that, Josh is still here. That's beyond my scope of expertise, obviously. Um, but we did send uh, the report that the engineers gave to us to Frank Seifert. Uh, we haven't heard anything. Sent that to the county also. I believe we did send it to the county as well. Okay. And as far as the county goes, you know, both agreements are contingent upon each sure. other. And um, we gave our last updated version of the agreement with the county to them. I haven't heard back from them. I'm assuming it's going to come up at their meeting next week. Yeah, I think they, they haven't had a meeting since we sent No, they have not had a meeting since. Right, right. So that's that's where we're going to stand there. Yeah. Anybody got any questions uh, while Josh is still here on the on the engineering for the Beacon Hill sewer lift station and so forth. Okay, all right, moving right along. Uh, next up on the agenda is Resolution 202208. 20, uh, it's the deal with the Madison Street Scott Grant. Uh, I believe this deals with beautification. Jim might be able to add a little something to that. This, Jim, this was actually paid in Madison Street. We've been awarded the grant. So at this point, we're authorizing the mayor to sign off on the grant so we can get our money from the city. And that is, uh, tell us exactly where that is. It's going to be from directly in front of the building here, right here at the intersection of Garrison and Madison, down to Long Island. Long Island. Okay. All right. Everybody got that? I'll need a motion for resolution 2022-08. Commissioner Ashbrook made a motion. Second. Second by Commissioner Lowry. Any discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Same sign. Motion passed 5 and 0. Next on the agenda is Resolution 202209, deals with the Highway 98 Beautification Grant application from the FDOT. This is a reference to the joint picture we have going with the uh, Garden Club. The Garden Club has asked that we consider looking at the intersections of 4th, 3rd, and 2nd Street to Ask the state of Florida for beautification money. Okay. Everybody understand that? All righty. I'll need a motion resolution 2022 09. 
All right, <laughs> Mr. Lauer made my motion second by Commissioner Langston. All in favor, aye. Aye. Those same sign. Most passed by the Last thing on the agenda for me, Mayor, is a special master contract with uh, Attorney Mel Magnuson. Um, apparently, that's come due, and uh, he is asked the only changes in the contract from the last one is simply the dates, and he is asking for a $25 an hour raise from $150 an hour to $175. Okay. Discussion? How's he been working out? As far as I know, he's been running through the, the hearings and he's doing his job. Your options are to accept this or go out and bid again. No, I don't, do I don't need to Motion to approve. Okay, the motion, uh, Commissioner uh, Hoffman made a motion to approve the special master contract. Is that a, a yearly two year? Two okay, years. wow. Okay, two year contract. There's second. Second, second by Commissioner Ashbrook. All in favor, aye. 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 Those same sign motion passed. Five and up. That's all I have to do. All right. Any questions? <laughs> Any questions? Plan. Okay. Moving right along. Yes, sir, man. The first item we have is city projects. If you're turning to 21, you'll see the ones that you're currently working on. Uh, we covered Walkway and Washington Gym. They should be wrapping that up any day. I went by yesterday and it looks really nice. We're not going to take it out for it. So that one's about complete. Okay, any questions on city projects? I think they're real close to getting uh, going on the gazebo. Yes. And uh, so that'll be a good thing. I got, I got something. Okay. Um, Mike, how much do we still have left in the policy rent? Um, I think it's about four or five thousand dollars left in the budget for, for uh, facilities. Let me check. What I was asking for is the um, bathroom that we um, definitely need to look into it. Uh, it's, it's, it's not, um, I don't think it's acceptable for, um, for, for those bathrooms to be like they are. Um, yes, somebody may have did something to them on the store, but I think it's um, <clears throat> our responsibility to try to make it look better. So um, uh, I'm talking with our commission and they're willing to help us. So if we could try to put effort into making those bathrooms a little better, I mean, it, I don't think it would cost too much. Um, uh, it'd, be, it'd be great. Yep, uh, $6,000 remaining in the, in the parks budget for this fiscal year. Okay. Um, well, how do just need an estimate. Yeah, well, I just need an estimate on, on what needs to be done and how much it'll cost. And I don't know if John does that or what. Any suggestion, John? Yeah, I'd be glad to take a look at Commissioner Langston and, and come up with cost estimate for the board. Absolutely. Let, you know what you think needs to be done there to change it all out or just retrofit what's there? Okay, that's fine. Or or we and Commissioner Lowry has got some. <laughs> yeah, and if it, my thought was too, if, if it's a significant upgrade, we might want to put some money in the next year's budget for it. But you said, Commissioner Quinn. Yeah, we talked in, uh, you know, we have a doc, but I have to talk to him again and look at John and Eddie, sure. and, and we're, we're definitely. Uh, Hoping it's not too much. It's probably not too much that we can move forward. Yeah, we we're hoping that it's not too much. Those bathrooms would have been there like that for quite some time. They did a little minor repair to a toilet, but the stalls, the stalls that they they back in the 1950s that need to come out. The bathroom, they've been there like that since almost school has been built. The only thing that's probably been changed out is maybe a uh, toilet stool or something like that. The windows are still the same. You gave them, let them out. You can't do anything. And see, we rent the building out uh, quite a bit for parties, receptions, repass. And we've been having quite a few repasses here lately for quite a few people that passed away. And we've been, we've been back to back every week. And whenever we let them use the building, we let them use it free. But the bathrooms, they're, they're usable. If you really have to go, you go, but they definitely need some upgrade. 
major major upgrade that I would say. I guess six thousand dollars will do it. That'd be great. I think what I'm trying to say is, if we're going to do something, let's do it right. I agree. I agree. We don't have to get back to it. So. I agree. Do we well, got any money to kick in? Uh, we really don't have funds because we don't. We we if we rent the building, the money is basically taking care of the air conditioning. We haven't wrote any grants or anything. Okay. We're staying above board. We You're had floors. We had money for the floors, and that, that took a big chunk. Right. Uh, like I said, here lately we just been using the building for repass, and that's free. We don't charge for anything sure. like that. Okay. We're just trying to steal above above water just to make the facility because you know we bring that up, painted everything. You know, did a great job with the uh, gym with their bathroom. <laughs> we had that now. We won't be back for a long time. A little bathroom really look good in the gym. I mean, they did a great, excellent job. Yeah. We can't run over there to get a key, run all the way over there to use them, then run all the way back. So that's why we need an upgrade there. And we'll wait till uh, we need the ceiling drop, but we'll wait for another matter of that time. Let's just get the bathrooms taken care of so we can move forward and keep us looking good because quite a few people come from out of town. They remember going to school out there and they see in the bathrooms and they'll say the same thing to me that they look like they did when they was going to school. And I know I've been out of school 50 years. So some of them have been out of school 60 years. So just upgrade and update and we'll really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, much man. Uh, it was a matter of the Joint City County Workshop, and we discussed earlier on this, it's going to be at 5 o'clock here next Thursday and register the I'd just like to remind everybody to uh, talk to the people you think uh, feel like we, we need to upgrade our facilities for our children, uh, have the uh, Little League board and, and softball, anybody that's interested, uh, we don't need to wait until next year and everybody fussing about the problems that we always hear. Let's let's get moving forward and hopefully uh, make it a better place for our kids. Chair, when can we expect an agenda and who's collaborating to put that together? To you and the chairman? I guess, yeah, I can we can put something together. I, I don't know what the agenda is for. Well, the sports complex. Historically period. things get snuck into those meetings, that's all I'm wondering. We we call the workshop. It's gonna be here. So I assume that I'm going to do the agenda as far as I'm concerned. It's, a, it's one point. It's hard enough to get everybody on point. Let's stick with with this and, and only this and uh, go from there. Unless anybody else got something else you want to put on. Anybody got anything else they think we need? To? It's all we're talking about sports complex. All right. We'll, we'll go. I'll get with Jim and Miss Charlotte uh, and uh, get something out this week just to send it to the county and make it efficient. All right, sir. Uh, on the new business, uh, sewer connection statute, we actually had a discussion on it, I think, in the last meeting on there. Uh, so we were debating as to try to look at what the statutory requirement is for mandatory. Yeah, I, I think the discussion was that we want to do it. Uh, we only had three here. I want to get everybody here and get their opinion. Uh, Mr. Ashbrook is on the phone. And uh, the point is, we've waited a long time and we've got areas that folks could hook on the tour. And, and by law, they're supposed to do it. And we've never even required it. So that's what we need to decide we want to do or not. Statute allows us to make it mandatory after 365 days of the sewer line being installed in front of their house. I right. say we give everybody in Gulf County five years to make that hook up themselves. There's grant opportunities to get it done for little to nothing. And after that, it even builds in here that they can pay in installments for two years of the data notification if they'd like to. Right, right. And we've got a sewer thing right now that we're offering folks. I'm, I'm a little... I'm a little hesitant on the five year. I, I'd like to kind of do a Commissioner Hoffman and negotiate a little bit and uh, say three years. Would you be okay with three? I mean, that's, and still they can pay on time. Uh, 
the sooner the better, Mayor. Yeah. And, nice. and what we're trying to do with this is stimulate folks. We, we got grants sitting out there with the money, and we have, what, half a dozen people signed up for it. It's we could go after more grant money. How many? Yeah, yeah. You're, you're right. It, there's only half a dozen and maybe 10 that are waiting until after the rental season. So it's slow. Yeah. And it's so slow. this kind of, I would say, look, a lot of money there for 500 bucks. In the current state administration there, you're going to see more opportunities. We can apply for septic sewer every year if you possibly get. Yeah. And look how much it will protect the body. So anyway, I'll buy them three years now. Anybody? Yeah. I like three. Better than five. Five. I, I think what we're gonna find out once they're gonna do it, or either gonna do it, or you know, have a lawsuit on your hand. Uh, but the time frame is not going to persuade that many people in my mind. We just have to do our due diligence in educating the people about the opportunity for grant funding to help the system, and uh, that's the key in our role is to. Let people know there's there's uh, one that is law, and two we're going to give them ample time to get it done, and then assist them with the expense of doing it through the grant. And who is the enforcement arm on this? Is this the health department that would have to enforce it once we say they're in violation, or is this something that's going to overwhelm court enforcement in exactly three years? We identify them first. We have to. The city has to identify. We have to notify. And uh, and identify and notify and then then the clock starts. I assume. Say that, uh, yeah. I think we might be able to get some help with the Department of Environmental Protection as well. So right. This, 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 this statute is vague. Just says you know, it you know does not limit the power. You know, talk to the department and the cities. And then the other question is, does it apply to existing sewer systems today? Is that where we're given three years leeway? And then anything new that we build, we follow statute. Say you have 365. Oh, anything knows is you've got to do it. And I'm thinking yeah. Beacon Hill, you know, they're all going to be forced if they're on subject to the country. Well, hey, the road would be ready to build that one as well. Yeah. yeah, it would be three years from notification. So if y'all were to pass in, say, three years, then, then staff would have to put their notify all these people in these geographic locations. And once they're notified, then that three year window ticks. Where it is. They'll have a master list, I assume. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll entertain a motion. So three is chapter to enforce chapter 381.00655, which uh, deals with uh, requirement to hook up the sewer. So the motion just, is there a second? Second with clarification. Okay. It is the motion that in three years we will enforce chapter 381. That yeah, I think so. Yeah, I mean, because we're, this gives them another 365 days for notification, right? So, I'm saying maybe we do two years and then we enforce this. If you're going to say it legally, two years, then we don't find three, three years. years with this, that's actually four, four years. years. Right. That's okay. what I'm saying. Okay, that makes sense. So, you want to say a notification? So, basically, the clock's going to start ticking the day that we have a a piece of mail that, that is sent to that location. That's correct. Yeah. So we're just giving some leeway on this and saying instead of the 365 days, we're giving you three years. Right. Uh, right. Yeah. Right. You can say one year. Yeah. Yeah. So we're, we're, I just want to be clear on the motion. The motion stands two years plus the statute of one. So three, three years from date of notification. Now, is that water and sewer or just sewer? This is uh, sewer. This is just, just sewer. This we've got sewer. a lot of folks that don't have our water either, like Overstreet, for example. Well, from a billing perspective, can we bill someone sewer without water? Yeah, we do it sure. all the time when we can. You can, but it's a flat fee, right? No, so we read, no, no, no. We read, you we get read the, the county. Yeah. Yeah. Well, how are we going to read them if they've got a well out in the county and there's a sewer line running? Well, if we don't, well, that's a flat rate, so you're, you're talking some yeah, completely different. Right. And most of the time, we try to push them in the direction that to get either on county water or city water, whatever it might be. So, gotcha. okay. but I just didn't know if it was strictly sewer we're speaking about or water as well. This is yeah, water. This sewer. Is going That's absolutely. There may be another yes. chapter out there that talks about water. So we even want to say. Well, I would feel more comfortable with having the entire uh, chapter 
not just part of 381 in front of these. Usually a statute will tell you, here's what you need to do. And then there'll be another part that talks about who enforces this language and what is the penalty for not following the language. And if we don't have that in front of us, then I would, uh, I would be more comfortable in knowing what is the fine, who imposes the fine, but what is the uh, recourse for someone that says, I'm not doing it. And I think that would be in the entire chapter somewhere to be surprised if they had a statute that did cover those things. I'll take a look at I still think we can move forward with the motion. It's just that we will have to figure out the enforcement arm of it before that three year mark hits. Yeah. My only concern is just making sure everybody's notified mm -hmm. as of like the building department notifying individuals that are fixed and construct. That's gonna be the that's gonna be the challenge part. Yeah, the health department's involved in that too. Yeah. <laughs> okay, the most by Commissioner Ryan's second by Commissioner Ashford. Any further discussion? All in favor aye. 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 Oh, same sign. Motion passed by now. Uh, the next item we have is RFQ 2022-02. This is environmental review services for the CDBGDR. If you'll turn over pages 24 through 27, we actually had to bid this out twice. Um, state required it because we only received one bid the first time. We only received one the second time. Uh, have been notified by DEO that they will approve it if it is approved by the board. So, staff recommendation at this point is to award the uh, RFQ on page 24 to. And, and that is uh, what has to be done before we can get going on fixing all these lift stations. Yeah, so this is yeah. part of this is part of the city of BGDR yeah. requirement on there to have environmental. There might be an arrowhead out there somewhere. And it would be for Fred Cox Enterprises for 35000 Motion to accept. For All Fred right. Enterprise. Right. 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 Motion by Commissioner Ashbrook. There's a second for Fred Fox, 35000 Second for the discussion. Second for discussion, Commissioner Hopper. Go ahead. Oh, I was confused about page 25, 26, and 27. I realize that's the, uh, the, evaluation and, and how they scored but is is the individual companies on each page is that what this is we only had one so I, okay. we, I, I, we were required we we actually sent it up to see the dr folks and they said even though there's one we still want to see a score sheet. okay i that should it. come down to the next thing scott i mm -hmm. think that this is page range box in front Okay, I, I think it's going to have to do with the CEI services on yeah. the first street. Yeah, all that score because it looked like that right same now. Copy. No, yeah, that's correct. There were four bidders on the CEI service, yeah. four or five. Yeah, so, so, so on the next one that we're about to present to you, we had three or four different companies. And, and that's where the point scoring is that we're looking at. Yeah, okay. I'm talking about page 25, yeah. 26, and 27. Yep. Is yes. there a way to know which company? Is represented on page 25. Fred, Fox, Fred Fox. that's the only oh, one there was. Two different issues. There's two issues for two different items. Okay. Three different people score the same. Yeah. If you look at page 24, what we did was we put the, the vendors that bid, and then behind it, if you look at pages 25, 26, and 27, states that we still need to send one in, even though we only had one company. Okay, that's what I thought. That's clear as mud from this anyway. <laughs> Uh, your second stand. It does, but I'm still confused because <laughs> if you look at tw page 25, it looks like a copy of page 26 with different numbers on it. It's it's the same. It is. What happened was they require you to have a committee to, to give a grading recommendation to you. And what you have okay. is you have That's why the autographs on the bottom are three. Yeah, so the That's the committee. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'm clear now. Good. The staff, um, it's a staff recommendation. It's a requirement. Okay, it looked like three different companies, but we didn't say who was in. Okay, I'm clear. Yes, I'm Motion, uh, second stand. Yes. Okay, all in favor, aye. 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 Same sign, motion passed five and nine. All right, let's go to the next.
The next one is RFQ 3022-03, the CEI services. This is what we were talking about earlier, that we have to have somebody do the reviewing um, for the first three project. If you'll turn over to page 28, we actually had four companies that actually bid on this one. This is money that's going to come back down from the state. We've got to turn it back into the state through the Scott grant. But 28 list of companies that actually bid on it. And then you'll see the scoring that was done by the <coughs> staff on pages 29, 30, and 31. And staff recommendation is to go with uh, SCE engineer for your CEI services. I was wondering, what is the S and S and M E? Yes, sir. That is another company. I believe that one. One was out of. Lynn Haven and Warhol's out of Mary. Yeah. Sir. Okay, so they're not in any kind of order. Right there. No, sir. What you have is no. So Lynn, we just listed them on the gotcha. staff recommendation based on the scoring that we had put together would be for SCE. Gave the high score from staff. Gotcha. I was a little confused, but I've seen their numbers down the bottom. Yes, sir. All righty, motion to accept staff recommendation based on point scoring for uh, SCE and motion by Commissioner Ashbrook. There's second. Second. Second by Commissioner Lowry. Any discussion on that? All in favor, aye. Uh, aye. Same sign. Motion passed by. Okay, the last thing we had is uh, Mr. Lowry opportunity coming up called Safer Out of School. Uh, we currently have our trail that goes all the way, basically from the college all the way up to 71. We've talked about for years potentially trying to get all the way over to the Washington Gym Complex. Right now, it's not possible, but we can get another leg uh, put in play, we do think, based on the same group. What we'd like to be able to do is go from 71 back behind Woodward uh, with the asphalt trail to First Street. Okay? Then we can put a sidewalk in, see if I can get a line to the drive. Then we'll get a that much closer. We can still work with um, the St. Joe Company potentially to get across uh, the railroad crossing there to do it. But this would be an opportunity for our kids to go and get back in a safer route to school. Just a great application. We don't have any guarantees, but we would like to put it in there. Have we asked St. Joe Company for an easement in the past? That's already beat down like a trail anyway. There's been some some discussions from what I was told with the uh, with the group that's working on the evaluations of the um, of the trails and of the um, stormwater system. So uh, nothing formal, but there have been. And the grant uh, is for how much? I want to say it's somewhere in the neighborhood of about four hundred thousand dollars somewhere for kids in two fifty four hundred. I think, I think that sounds great. Yeah. That would be nice. When, when you apply for this grant and we approve it, does it have to be specific to a route? Yes, they want to, they want to indicate on the route. There. They may give you a little bit of play towards the end, but pretty much when you turn in a grant that you show that the difficulty you're based on your assumption of the cost based on the linear fee, most of them will be pretty close to it. Well, because after I talk to you about the idea of going uh, across 71 and then through that alley that we already own. Uh, and that's not a bad idea. What about the idea of going to 71, extending the sidewalk, it's, and it's almost there, to the courthouse, and then going straight across into Bridgeport community, and then coming up Avenue A? That way you pick up all the people that live on on that end of Avenue A. They don't have to necessarily go just to the, the gym to have access to. And that was just the thought. Yeah, that's okay. a good idea. We're just trying to think about it. We, we we might still, more accessibility. I, I understand what Ms. Hawkins is saying, but I would love to see it go to watch, connect with um, Washington High Gym, go by the garden and go to um, Washington Gym. Um, yeah, and, and I'm saying it would. It would go all the way to the gym. It would just be where you cross 71. I'm just worried about kids being on First Street. Yeah. Uh, that was my thinking. But I mean, 
Yeah, I'd like to see it long way. It's kind of been a master plan for a while. Yeah, yeah. So, are you going to submit a, a map with the with the grant uh, application yesterday and indicate the linear piece of materials that we would like to see? So can we work on that a little more yeah, based we'll on we'll this? Okay, yeah, it's a great idea. All righty. Uh, the last thing I have is we have to do one addition on there. Uh, vehicles under state contract. Generally, what we do is we wait until you approve our budget and we have an indication of vehicles that, that we have and we'll go out and purchase them on state contracts. <coughs> With the availability of vehicles in the last couple of years, it's been hard to get vehicles. We have several that we still haven't received. Uh, but basically, what we put in front of you is a list that's in our proposed budget for this year on vehicles that are in the in the budget for this upcoming year that they are asking for a letter of intent from the city. So before we do that, we want to bring to the board with your question. All right, everybody got a handout on the vehicles that are proposed. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, eight vehicles plus uh, two that are already been approved from last year's budget, basically, that never came in. Uh, Commissioner Lyle, mm -hmm. there's two of them that never came, and they're not on there. So, uh, anyway. So you just need the approval to order the vehicles early. We need, we have, they're requesting us to send a letter of intent from the city of Fort St. Joe to conform to their week on five. Yes, I need your approval to When does payment need to be received? On delivery? So yes. you're, you're looking at two years from now before we even get these and have to worry about paying. Potentially, this is, this is strange. Uh, this strange. Be um, yeah. But we're going to have to pay for the two from the last order. This budget cycle problem. Yeah. Yeah. Get their delivery. Get their delivery. Yeah. We ordered a lot every one of last year. And we can tell about two. Now, what, what I was told to Mr. Roman mm -hmm. is bigger through, you know, they, they do want to purchase orders in by tomorrow, so the board can make sure that you know, they get in production. But should something happen, you know, as we continue the budget process, there's Alan J didn't see much of issue if we had to drop one, you know, they can probably yeah. resell it. It was just a commitment. That's where we're at. If we don't commit now to forward, we're not going to do it. And, and the prices have, as everybody knows, significantly yeah. increased. From like 45 to 60s and that type of thing. So, how many surplus vehicles do we currently uh, have now or uh, in the coming months? I have none that are running. No, none that are running. No, I mean we we, we run ours until they don't run anymore. You have one, so and what's your plans for that surplus vehicle now? No, I mean, well, I'd like to ask the support of the board to donate that to Eddie Fields. He asked about three years ago for a truck. And we didn't have any. And uh, I think if we're going to talk buying vehicles, we need to talk about what we're doing with them. And I would, uh, I'll add that to the motion I'm about to make. Okay. It's okay. I'll make a motion that we approve the request of the staff to, to uh, send the letter of ordering vehicles for the following year before the deadline and I'd ask that the one vehicle that the police department currently has after it's stripped and ready to donate and donate it to Eddie's group. What's the name of the group? Senior citizens uh, group. And that's the motion. Second. Okay. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Discussion. Everybody understand? You're not using that vehicle, too. It's a spare now and once we uh, put it in the to get rid of it. Uh, well, I have received the other vehicle, right. but once we receive the other vehicle, yeah, we'll, we'll be putting that for okay. And with ours, that's it's got to be a 5013C. Yeah, there's some different criteria involved. What you can do. So and don't get yeah. us to the next meeting to make sure that the statutory requirement, we need to look at the statutory Yeah, yeah. So I think it's a great idea, but let us, if you don't mind, can we hold off on the on the donation until we can get this. Well, we can go ahead and pass a motion contingent on it being, yeah, being okay. Do that for a statute. Yeah, yeah. I think that would go without saying that we're going to follow the law. <laughs> well, this is government. <laughs> okay, motion and a second. Everybody understand? Any more discussion? 
All in favor, aye. aye. Opposed, same sign, motion passed by. Thank you. You thought I forgot about it. <laughs> All righty. Hey, I, I don't have anything. Beach enough, beach up enough. Like that. All right. Larry? Uh, just one thing. Uh, we're, we're getting both of our water tires on Long Avenue clean right now. Uh, we had 10th Street clean yesterday, and we're going to get Shark Tank clean next week. And this is all done under the maintenance agreement with uh, Utility Service Company. So oh, well, while I got you and John sitting there, we haven't done a major flushing in how many years? Oh. Long time. Oh wow! Yeah. Don't don't we need to do that? At, schedule that at some point in time. You're asking you think me. It's, I'm going to say no. Okay. <laughs> All right. I didn't know if there was a requirement to to scour those lines or what, but I mean we're not having well, a lot they, of complaints. It's it's there's not requirements that you have to do it every year or every two years or every three years. I think it's a lot. Based on what Larry's seen as far as his, his water quality, you know, so everything good. Then I'm just asking. I mean, certainly if he had major issues or you know something comes up, and, and we could. <coughs> I believe that's the case. You can see, He's not right now. But, yeah. Okay, we'll let Larry ask us when it's time. All right. Anything else, Larry? That's right, sir. Kevin. Um, had a lot of rain, so we're we have six inches of uh, pre-board in, in the pond right now. Um, we're pushing the water out as hard as we can on the field. Um, we've had one of the backwash pumps go, and if you remember in 2020, uh, we replaced one of the German-made backwash pumps because we couldn't get parts for it with an American-made pump, which means we had to um, do some uh, fabrication as far as the plumbing goes. Um, I may be in that same circumstance. Uh, the pump's eight eight thousand something dollars, um, and then you'll spend a couple thousand on the piping work to make it all you know, plumb up. Uh, it slows us down about fifteen to twenty percent. Um, we've fabricated some stuff in the middle of the night to keep up and running, but we're a little bit slower than we should be. So I've got the pump over in Panama to AAG. Uh, they're looking to see if they can salvage enough parts to get that pump back and going. Um, and then, yeah, I'll eventually have to replace it. But, um, that's kind of where we are with our discharge. So we're on the clock, discharge right there. Um, that's pretty much all. That's pretty much it. We're pushing people as hard as we can before yeah. we've got it. So, yep. That's kind of where we are. Okay. Questions? Anybody? Kevin? All right. Mike? Uh, FEMA update. Um, uh, Clifford Sims is the is still in step five. I called our state PA adjuster. We need them to, to push that final report to FEMA for their approval on Clifford Sims. So I called this morning and they said he said he'd look into it and follow up with me. So it's not moved since the last meeting. That's on fishing here. That's that's correct. Clifford Sims, yeah. So it's a big project, so I guess that's part of the whole thing. I get it. Uh, the uh, budget uh, next meeting is next Tuesday at 12 noon. And I'll try to do a better job of getting the budget out to you before the meeting. Okay. All right. Everybody, next, next Tuesday at noon, we'll have a little more time to maybe get this thing done. Uh, code enforcement. Okay, sir, Mayor, I did have a, um, a meeting with our credit enforcement officers. We did do a drive through town um, first of the week. So we did go through and evaluate where we're at on several different fronts, uh, everything from brass to substandard structures to campers. So we have compiled those and they are moving forward with that. And also with your, there's another set of hearings that's scheduled to. Yeah, I did notice in the star last week the public notice on the special magistrate hearing which is this week or next week? That's coming up a month. But anyway, there were a half a dozen and about four out of six were people living in trailers. So they are coming and uh, before them and it's it's working for now. Uh, question, code enforcement. Chief? 
Uh, just a couple things. Uh, today is the first day of scallop season. We were ramped up about 6 o'clock this morning, got everything set up, and hardly anybody showed up. <laughs> uh, bad weather and everything. We're, we're going to do the same thing in the morning. We're not going to set up. We're just going to leave it as yeah. is in the morning. And uh, I, I have somebody working today, tomorrow, then skipping Thursday and Friday. And, They'll be there Friday and Saturday until scallop season's over. Yeah. Because it's Fridays and Saturdays are going to be horrible. Right. Uh, we're rerouting like we did the last couple of years because it works great. Keeps traffic from back up out to the red light. And um, other than that, school's back in. So we've ramped up uh, traffic control on Garrison Avenue and Long Avenue. So. Folks just need to quit being in such a big hurry and slow it down a little bit. Yep. Yeah. Other than that, I don't have anything. Let's have any questions. I like you busy. Anybody? All right, Ms. Pierce. Mr. Mayor, Commissioners, we're still working with our grant writer back and forth when something comes up, see if anyone's interested or what we need to do to provide information. We'll mention to you that yesterday the lighthouse was closed for the repairs, painting to be down for 90 days. This is with Razorback LLC through some of our insurance money. Uh, so we are working on that. The bid for the lighthouse, keeper's quarters, and oil shed repair, we did not have any bids to open last Friday. We reached out to our architects to see what they'd like to do next. So just know the lighthouse is closed for roughly 90 days. Renovation repairs. So, so what's the plan if we? I don't know if we we're going to have a plan. They, you got it. Okay. We're going to have a plan. All right, good deal. And I, I know the Centennial Building bids were supposed to be up last week, and there was a addendum yes. about electrical. They had to rebid those, and most, and hopefully next well, like week. Friday. This Friday. We just it every week. this Friday, ten o'clock. Okay. So, all right. Anybody? That's all I have unless anyone has questions. Anybody? Sure. Okay. Citizens to be heard. Anybody come up? Chester. Uh, just a couple of things I want to just bring up. One was that uh, we just finished the uh, Brownfield workshop here, and it was very successful. Uh, I had an opportunity to take them on some tours. Uh, again, they had uh, the eye again on North Port St. Joe and talked about some of the great things they want to do in North Port St. Joe. But I questioned uh, Miles them about uh, sending a letter to the city about the CRA was hoping to get some kind of reply back from the city. And when I called today, they said they had not heard anything back. So I was just want to check on the CRA status, uh, the compliance to the letter that they sent to the city. Uh, the other one was comment on what Jim and, and uh, Commissioner Lanks were saying about that, that pad. Uh, back in the day when I was a little child, they had a little roadway, a little trail that used to run from Garrison across the railroad tracks all the way into the other side of town. Uh, also along where that old railroad track was. It looked as if that, that could be considered as a way of making that track complete because it's already a railroad track there. And then there used to be a pathway where, uh, I don't know if you can remember where Mr. Black guy could used to live out between the railroad tracks. Uh, all that was a, was a pathway across there. And uh, that would be a good connection also for that path. And so if we could consider that because it's wide open and it comes directly into a North Garrison, which will run directly into that that path. So it's something I would like you know y'all look at when you do that. But other than that, I just we want to thank uh, the Brownfield uh, workshop for doing what they did in Fort St. Joe. And so they said we're on the map and we got some funds coming. Uh, we still would love to have some kind of answer for our CRA so someone could direct some of those funds. Did we get a letter from Miles? Did we? Yeah, we it was on my email. Yes, send it, yes, I forwarded to you by email. Check your email. If you didn't get it, let me know. But yes, we got one the other day in reference to uh, the modification. I know 
I know the board it took actually one time before to put it in for the budget for next year with the CRA. So at some point you probably want to have a CRA meeting to take a look at this new proposal in there to see how that's there a going. dollar amount? I don't remember that. Uh 20, 20, 20, 20, 000, 20, 000. 20 something thousand. Yeah, twenty something thousand. Okay. But you take a look at it and I think what you want to do the next step would be at some point you want to call a CRA meeting because you need to figure out your budget for the CRA too. Okay. okay. Oh, I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank All right. I do, have a CRA, yeah. I do have a CRA budget draft. Okay. Oh, okay. uh, Mike, if you will bring that uh, to our meeting next Tuesday at noon, and then we can uh, we'll have something to talk about. We might even well, we got to notice it. So, I mean, we could actually notice the CRA as part of the workshops. Probably is. The germ one and can mean the other. Uh, get with get with Mike and Jim, Miss Charlotte, and see what best way to do that. We might kill two birds with one stone. That helps. <clears throat> All right, uh, Mr. Lyson, you'll be first. Um, I'd like to um, thank John, staff, chief, everyone um, getting those uh, speed on um, lights. Um, on Long Avenue, it helps out. I'm telling you, um, the traffic gets slowed down. You see the light before you even get there. So I think that that, that was an important part of uh, a, a important thing that we did as far as school. That's all. I yeah, that's good. And and you know, we get it paved. They're gonna speed's gonna ramp up. <laughs> Chief will be busy. All right, uh, Mr. Ashbrook. Mayor, I just had one thing. I was going through my emails this morning and noticed there was a, a request from a private citizen to lease some space at the marina. Right. What's, and did we ever discuss that? Or? We well, agreed to not add any additional rental space available. Okay. At, at I just didn't know the city owned phone. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So the answer would be no. Got it. That's all I have. Okay. That's all I have. The uh, only thing I had is I seen an email uh, regarding the drainage, um, Marvin Avenue. And I know you yeah. guys have been attacking that thing mm -hmm. um, because of, I guess it's been stopped up. Um, but this was from a David Ashbell. I think it comes to all of us. I might get it in my guy. I've got uh, Alice Martin. Yeah, I've spoken to her. Yeah. Uh, it come with a picture. Did you guys get that, Jim? Uh, what was the address on that tweet? It's like 80. I'm sure. 604 Martin. Yes, that, that, that is all taken care of through there. Yeah, that's okay. That's yeah. Somebody we, have, just, we have some work to do between 10th and 16th, which we're going to start in the morning. Uh, we have a few storm boxes to take care of just in days. So. Yeah, I'm noticing now he just sent it to the commissioners. So, okay. Y'all got to get that care of. Let's get uh, Was that a recent picture or that one a couple of weeks ago in the back? This is August 1st. Yeah. 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 We, um, yeah. They, they pulled a we actually, lot of. We actually pulled a drum out of it yesterday. In the plant. So good. They're on it. Oh, Commissioner Hoff. Uh, the only item I have is I was contacted to see if we could uh, do some improvements and revitalize uh, the nine hole golf course in Fort St. Joe. I believe we're talking a lot of money and it was there for years. Uh, it just needs some attention. Flag and, uh, flagpoles and grass mowing and those kind of things. So, if we can do that uh, or whatever we need to do to bring that back to life, I know years ago the high school used it and uh, it, it's there, it's green space. So, whatever we need to do to get the ball rolling and, and get that back up and running. Yeah, I think it was a maintenance nightmare, is what it was. And, um, it was a constant. I think John almost had to have a guy down there mowing. Well, it's like right seven. now with the range we've had, we can't mow it. It's too low. Yeah, it's yeah. just all under the yeah. I don't think it's been up and running for 
Ten years. Yeah, years. yeah, when I was a recreation director, I reestablished it and I would yeah. put a real mower and I was cutting it and got the irrigation system going. But you know, yeah, it, it, I had to cut it you know, twice a week. You know, yeah. so John just doesn't have the staff to do that. Well, we're, or would you be able to do it when we bring on the additional staff that we've approved? The I, I would like to look at that then. Yes, sir. But well, let's uh, let's look at it uh, after we get our, our new personnel hired and see if that's something we can do. Uh, the way I look at it is, is we we need to respond to the people that are you know wanting to do it. It's either yeah we're going to do it or no we're not going to do it. So when we get the new people and you look at the equipment, mm -hmm. I'll get back with me and we'll see if we can make it happen. That's all I have. Is all right. Uh, only thing I have is uh, Labor Day is Monday, September the 5th. We have a meeting on Tuesday, September the 6th. Is there anybody interested in canceling that meeting or we've got too much on our plates to do that? Can, could we get by in one meeting, uh, which would be the September 20th? Yes, what, what we've got to do is for our budget, we've got to have two separate meetings in there that are established with public hearings in there. So those will be outside of that. That's the big, that's the big milestone for September. So unless y'all have something else, that's the big milestone. Our first reading is that next Tuesday. So if we needed to discuss any business, could we just tack it on after that first reading? We could do it after. Yeah. As long as we can tackle the budget in the next two meetings. Then. Right, right. Our next two budgets uh, were... Twenty third and the thirtieth. So, sure. All righty. Um, motion to cancel that meeting. So six. Motion by Commissioner Ashbrook, second by Commissioner Langs. In discussion, I don't see anything on our agenda that we kick can down the road for the next. Uh, we've got to do. All right. On favor, aye. Opposed, uh, same sign. Motion passed five and zero. Oh. We'll have one meeting in September, or well, we'll have more than one, right? But officially, uh, the six is canceled. My shot. All right. Anything else? We we'll stand adjourned. <laughs> I got so